Jonah from Magnanimous Media, and this is the Movi M10 from Freefly. In this video, I'll cover the Movi's typical use, compatible cameras, basic setup, balancing, calibration, control, and typical maneuver execution, giving you an understanding of ideal use and potential, as well as the requirements and limitations of the system. All of this to understand when the Movi is best utilized and how it is effectively operated. At the end of this video, you'll be prepared for a single operator setup. If you're interested in learning more, watch the advanced video, which covers all other aspects of the Movi as well as advanced camera setups. The Movi M10 is a handheld stabilizer, which compensates for tilt, pan, and roll. The M10 stabilization enables complex, continuous takes that other systems are not capable of. The Movi is a problem solver that can be used to fill gaps in gear ability or mimic other stabilized systems if necessary. At first glance, it may appear to be a Steadicam replacer, but it is not. While a Steadicam uses an articulating arm to smooth out vertical movement, the Movi holds a flat horizon and camera direction, doing nothing for vertical bumps. While you can execute Steadicam-like shots, a Steadicam is almost certainly better at them. What the Movi enables is stabilization over a wider range of motion, which could mean the difference between a long tension-building take and resorting to a cut. You'll also find that the Movi is useful in tight spaces, and an untethered system will allow for handoffs, meaning the Movi can carry shots through spaces that the operator cannot fit through. The first consideration is weight. The M10 has a payload maximum of 12 pounds. Keep in mind that you'll be holding the Movi out in front of your body. It may not seem like much at first, but consider that you'll most likely be doing long takes, so the weight will catch up to you. Next, you'll need to consider the build. Long or tall cameras may not fit in the gimbal. If a camera is too tall, it may hit the pan motor too long and it'll hit the roll knuckle. Also consider monitor position. For a simple setup, a rear-facing on-camera monitor is ideal. Attachable monitors, such as on the C500, C300, and REDS, cannot be used on the Mobi. Most camera setups will accommodate lightweight lens control and compact cinema lenses, such as Canon Cines, Zeiss CP2s, and Ultra Primes. We'll cover lens control and monitoring in the advanced video. I'll touch on a few basic rules as we set up, though. The same rules that apply to choosing a focal length for a Steadicam work here. Any movement or bumps will be amplified by longer focal lengths. Additionally, you may find yourself looking at your own hands when using extremely wide glass. With weight and build considered, the Red Scarlet and Epic will fit on the Movi with compact glass, lightweight peripherals, and the touchscreens removed. The Canon C100, 300, and 500 will fit with some minor modifications and some build considerations, notably mounting any rod support on the top of the camera. Due to the low weight and profile, nearly any DSLR can be accommodated by the M10, but some setups will require additional support, mostly for lenses, and to ensure adequate placement of the mounting point near the center of gravity. With all of this in mind, it's best to consult with us on your intended camera package before reserving the Mobi M10. Something else to consider is filtration, such as IR, ND, and polarizers. Some compact 4x4 matte boxes will fit on lightweight glass but your most reliable and compact solution is internal ND or on-lens filtration, such as variable ND and any screw-on filtration. The M10 has a six-point balancing procedure. Tilt front to back, tilt vertical, roll knuckle adjustment, roll fine tuning, pan fore and aft, and pan right to left. The goal of balancing is to get the camera to point in any given direction and hold position, making it inherently neutral. To start, first build your camera, including media and all peripherals. Find its center of gravity, and then insert a battery into the M10. Loosen the center clamp, insert the mounting plate, and place the camera's center of gravity over the center of the two horizontal bars, which should get front to back tilt close. If it's obviously out of balance, then use the center clamp to rough it in. You may need to roughly set roll balance when you first attach the camera, but leave it as long as it's not an impediment to balancing. You'll fine-tune front-to-back tilt balance later, but after a rough adjustment, move on to vertical tilt. Vertical tilt is adjusted with the clamps on either side of the camera platform. 
Raise the camera to face up and adjust vertical tilt. Try to get the camera to hold facing straight up. If it tilts down towards you, respond by raising the camera. If it tilts towards the roll knuckle, then respond by lowering the camera. Return the camera to face forward and fine tune front to back balance. Then go back to check the vertical balance. The tilt is balanced when the camera holds at any tilt without drifting. Roll is adjusted at the roll knuckle and can be fine tuned on the camera platform. For some builds, you should start with the roll knuckle, offsetting the camera to a particular side to allow for battery changes or other build considerations. For example, the Red Scarlet and Epic will often need to be offset to allow for the hand grip to open for red volt changes. Roll may not always hold at any given angle, but if it falls evenly on both sides and holds when placed horizontally, then the roll balance is good. Pan balance is two-part, fore and aft and right to left. Both are balanced at the pan yoke. To adjust fore aft, pan the gimbal so that it is parallel to the top bar, then tilt the hand grip towards you. If the camera pans out to face you, it's back heavy. If it pans to face the stand, it's nose heavy. To correct for back heavy gimbals, slide the yoke forward. To correct a nose heavy gimbal, slide the yoke back. Before loosening the pan yoke, support the camera, removing the weight from the pan yoke while adjusting balance. Tighten the bolts before releasing the weight. Repeat the test. If the gimbal holds parallel to the top bar, then the fore-aft pan balance is good. Before moving on, it's best to tape the position of the pan yoke and mark its angle, as this reference will be useful for right-to-left pan balance. Right-to-left balance is adjusted by tilting the swing of the pan yoke right or left. Checking right-to-left pan balance is similar to fore-aft. Pan the gimbal so that it is perpendicular to the top bar then tilt the hand grip towards you. If balanced, it should hold. If the gimbal pans in one direction, balance by tilting the pan yoke in the opposite direction. Again, support the gimbal under the camera before loosening the pan yoke. A little goes a long way for right to left pan balance. Completed balance allows the camera to hold various positions, making it inherently stable. Once you've balanced the Movi, you can move on to calibration. For this, you'll need to download the calibration software from freeflysystems.com. The software is available for Droid phones and tablets, Mac and PC computers. Bluetooth is required to communicate with the Movi. With the PC version, you can save calibrations, so keep that in mind when choosing your field kit. Make sure the Movi is unencumbered on the stand and it is not moving when you power it up. The three lights should rapidly flash, then go solid. During this, you'll notice that the gimbal will automatically acclimate. If the lights continue flashing, then power it off and repeat. If this persists, then one of the connections is likely broken, which is usually the result of the connector coming loose. Check the connections on the electronics and motors. Typically, the pan motor will become disconnected when balancing the pan. Once powered up, you'll pair the Movi as a Bluetooth device. Once paired, you'll want to get a sense for how well your balance is by opening the chart and going to motors. The Movi is at rest, so this will show you how hard the Movi needs to work in order to maintain balance. Ideally, these should all be zero with perfect balance, but an acceptable threshold is up to three or four percent. If you're seeing numbers above this, you'll want to power down and give balancing another go. Good balance is very important. The better the system is balanced, the less the motors will have to work at a rest, which means that your batteries will last longer. Additionally, you'll be able to tune the system to higher tolerances, meaning that you'll get better performance overall. Tuning consists of pan, roll, and tilt stiffness. These settings will determine how quickly and firmly the Movi responds to movement to rebalance. You want these numbers to be as high as possible without the system oscillating or vibrating. Start with pan stiffness and move in order. Take the value up with the course adjustments until the system vibrates. Then step it back down with the fine adjustments. After adjusting each parameter, you'll want to pick up the Movi and articulate it to check for any vibration, which you'll need to respond to by dialing back stiffness. In some instances, the Movi will oscillate on the stand, but not during operation. 
If it's smooth during operation, then it's okay that it oscillates on the stand. In this situation, it's best to keep the remote handy. Keep the remote on and simply hit the kill switch when returning the Mobi to the stand. In some cases, the Mobi will oscillate despite adjustments to stiffness. If your balance is good, this shouldn't be a problem, but the issue can be troubleshooted through the expert menu in the configurator. Before changing these settings, you should rebalance and attempt tuning again. If it does not resolve the issue, then use the expert menu as a troubleshooter. The gyro filter adjusts settings for the filter associated with the accelerometers and compass to reduce feedback that causes oscillation. A fast and rough oscillation, or buzzing, may be corrected by increasing this value. A slow and smooth oscillation may be corrected by decreasing this value. Output filter adjusts the filter that is applied to the output of the motors. This is used to further fine-tune stiffness settings or to correct oscillation that is not removed by reducing stiffness. The same rules that apply to the gyro filter work here. Hard and rough oscillation increase. Smooth and slow oscillation decrease. Changing these settings will impact the performance of the Movi, so they should only be used as a last resort or to diagnose the cause of the oscillation. Once calibrated, you should write the configuration to the Movi, which will bake it in so it returns to these settings when power cycled. You can also read a configuration from the Movi. This is useful if you've previously configured the Movi with the exact setup and want to match tuning and majestic calibration modes. However, you should still check for oscillation whenever the build has been broken down and or built back up. Roll trim adjusts the level of the roll. The Movi should default to a flat and level roll but if it seems off, you can dial it in here. If the camera is not level on the gimbal, you should balance by eye. As long as the gimbal is balanced, a skewed camera will not affect performance. Roll trim can also be adjusted on the remote, but we'll get to that in the advanced video. Maximum and minimum tilt angle will be useful in keeping the gimbal out of the shot or keeping cables from getting tangled. After you've completed these settings, the Movi is ready for operation in Majestic mode. However, you'll want to tune Majestic mode to your tastes. In Majestic mode, the gimbal will respond to operator panning input and can be set to respond to tilts. To fine-tune single operator setups, you'll want to adjust the pan and tilt window as well as the pan and tilt smoothening. The higher the pan window number, the more you have to pan to get a response. If the pan window is low, the window will be smaller, thus the pan will start sooner. Keep in mind that the window is there to smooth out unintended feedback, resulting in wavy movement. The same applies to the tilt window. Smoothing adjusts the acceleration of the pan or tilt. The higher the number, the more gradually it responds to panning. The smaller the number, the faster it will accelerate into the pan. You should set up Majestic mode in settings that you're comfortable with during your initial calibration, but keep in mind that you'll likely want to change these settings to suit different shots. For example, you'll likely want the Majestic mode to be less responsive for a simple follow or for more sweeping turns. However, you can see that these settings are not as ideal for quick moves, where you'll want a smaller window and the smoothening tune to keep up with your pan. Smaller window and smoothing settings are better for unpredictable subjects, but can look stiff and robotic, so calibrate with care to movement quality as well. Being able to move the Movi through tight spaces can extend to spaces that you yourself cannot fit through or over. With an untethered Movi, you can pass it off to a second operator continuing the shot. Doing simple tracking shots can be accomplished more smoothly by a Steadicam or Dolly, but the Movi allows you to have more range in height and camera control. You are now equipped to set up and operate the Movi with a simple camera in a single operator configuration. If you have more ambitious plans, you should check out our advanced video, which you can find on our Vimeo and YouTube page, as well as more news and tutorials at magnanimous.biz.